again, this is your professor, Ann Babson, one more time, a uh, different blue shirt. Um, I am uh, talking to you because you saw last week, I gave you some videos to watch generally about credible information. Um, and the information I gave you supposed that everyone was more or less operating in good faith um, to produce something that was credible or at least not an outright libelous lie of some kind, a dangerous lie of some kind. Um, and uh, most information on the internet fits into that category. Uh, but I am uh, making this video to talk to you about something that some scholars call the Gerasimov doctrine. Some people call it uh, an idea that General Gerasimov of Russian military intelligence gave in a speech, but wouldn't call it a doctrine. And so they're fighting with each other, the foreign policy scholars, whether or not to call it a doctrine, but not whether or not it was said at, by, at a speech by General Gerasimov or whether the Russians have acted on it. Um, and you don't have to take my word for this. Don't take my word without me telling you where I get my information. Um, and, and just as you would have to in your paper. I can't, uh, you can't say in your own papers, uh, if I ask you what the source is, you can't say, uh, I'll tell you what the source is. The source is shut up. Um, you can't do that. I will tell you uh, one of the sources that I've used, but there are others. Um, I've read um, Foreign Policy, a, a, an intellectual journal um, that discusses as the name suggests, issues in foreign policy for the United States. But a much more uh, thorough uh, analysis was issued by the bipartisan uh, Senate Intelligence Committee in 2018. I'm pretty sure it's 2018, if not 2018, 2019. Um, bipartisan, in case you are not deeply political, means both Democrats and Republicans on the Senate Intelligence Committee 100% agreed that this was going on. Um, it wasn't a partisan issue, meaning it wasn't like some thing that somebody was saying to win an election against the other party. No, this is a real thing. And um, it helps us understand the gravity of the divisions in our country right now. Now, our country has always had big disagreements, huge disagreements. And um, even during the era right after the American Revolution, men wouldn't go to a tavern where the political party to which uh, they belonged uh, wasn't uh, the, the, the chief source of conversation, which sounds a little bit like, you know, you know, pick your Twitter feed, pick your Facebook, pick your IG. Um, uh, it, it, today, but um, it didn't used to be this bad. I can remember even 20 years ago, it was nothing like this, nothing at all. Um, so what happened? Well, I'll tell you what the Bipartisan Intelligence Committee of the Senate talked about in its report and what Foreign Policy Journal talked about in its article on the Grasimov Doctrine. Um, General Gerasimov uh, works for Russian military intelligence, and um, he uh, has a goal, obviously, of promoting the former Soviet Union as the primary world power, and we stand in the way as a country of a variety of projects that they have. They're not a democracy. Uh, they don't have free and fair elections. Um, Putin is president for life. Uh, he doesn't call himself a dictator, but everybody will tell you he's a dictator. And General Gerasimov is in charge of military intelligence. And here's what he said to the people who work for him um, a little less than 10 years ago. He said, if we were to get into a war with the United States, we would lose. If we managed somehow to eke out a win, it would be at such a, a human cost and such a, a resource cost that there'd be no more Russia left to celebrate. We might have technically won the war, but our country would be a wasteland. Um, but he said, we can um, uh, 
engage Western democracies so that they don't fight us, but that they fight each other and we never fire a shot. If we go into their free systems of, of discourse, the press, social media, and we make them want to punch each other in the face. And over and over again, the former Soviet Union has followed this as a policy. They actually have uh, what are called sometimes troll farms in St. Petersburg, Russia, uh, and some other places where they hire people who speak English well and can write English well to pose as if they were Americans on our social media websites and um, to try to sow discord, to make us hate each other by talking about the things that divide us. What are some of the things that divide us? Racial tensions, uh, social class problems, um, and, and, and other issues related to things like uh, gun uh, regulations or control, uh, women's rights to a lesser degree. Um, and their point is not to support one group over another group, but to make us want to strangle each other every day. Because Putin's pretty much right. If we're too busy kicking each other in the teeth, we won't really notice when he um, annexes more of the Ukraine for oil interests that serve his economics against the interests of uh, the, the free people of the Ukraine who do have free and fair elections, except for when he had a guy come in, uh, Paul Manafort, who went to jail but was pardoned by Donald Trump, uh, to interfere in that election and um, place a guy that Putin handpicked. Um, uh, we live in scary days. And again, don't take my word for any of this. You have enough people with tinfoil hat conspiracies I've talked about. Check out what I say if you have a doubt. I am not trying to, to, to make you agree or disagree with me about anything, but I'm trying to point out how we got here to this place uh, where we're pretty much ready to have a fist fight where the um, insurrection January 6th can happen and one group of Americans can see it so very differently than the others. Um, uh, and um, uh, I think the only way through is to understand, first of all, that, yeah, we're probably jerks, but there's a bigger jerk behind us trying to make us have a fist fight. Let's start there. And second of all, there are a lot of lies, plain old lies to make us mad at each other that are being circulated. And this class attempts to help us navigate this. And um, the tools that I gave you for when people are trying very hard to tell the truth, but see it from very different ways, um, those tools still work pretty well for figuring out who's talking to you and what they want from you and how they see the world and how how carefully fact-checked their 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 um, ideas are. Uh, the Gerasimov Doctrine is alive and well and causing problems between us that could probably be solved. Um, uh, think about the ways that Americans... Um, fight about the vaccine. Um, there is evidence to suggest that some of the complicated disinformation that's floating around the internet about vaccines and what they do and don't do is uh, sown straight out of those troll farms in St. Petersburg that I mentioned. I don't have a source for that that is as credible as a bipartisan Senate uh, Intelligence Committee, but I think that you can agree that a lot of the stuff that you see out there about the vaccine is cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Um, and um, people are dying because of disinformation, which also suits General Gerasimov just fine. If we decided to die in great numbers in the United States without them firing a shot at us, that would work out okay for them too, in his view. He's not our friend. Um, I have said everything I wish to say. There is a video so that you just don't think that I am some tin foil hat conspiracy theorist. I have a video that was well-researched by reporters at the New York Times 
And, and the New York Times is so trusted for its fact checking that literally all the firms that uh, issue insurance trust what it says to make financial decisions about insurance claims and many, many other things because their fact checkers are in fact a source of factual information, though the editorials, as I talked about in the previous video, may have a, a perspective that is uh, not the same as their factual reporting. The same for the more conservative Wall Street Journal. Their, their editorials tell an opinion their uh, reporting is trusted by Wall Street firms uh, to make big financial decisions because they know you might not like their editorialists, but they're not lying to you about what they put in the reporting reported articles. They may not ask the right questions, or you may think that there would be better questions, but they haven't lied to you about the questions that they've researched. And so watch the video from the New York Times I'm not asking you to agree with anybody who's a liberal if you're not one, anybody who's a conservative if you're not one, but I am very much asking you to stand back for a minute when somebody tells you something is so and to figure out, just like I, I think I gave the example in an earlier video about who's a slut. <laughs> we are at the level in terms of uh, credibility of telling each other that everyone else is a slut right now. And I don't know about you, but I'm not a slut. And I'm going to guess you're not one either, but I'm not asking. <laughs> In any case, watch the video, understand what I'm talking about. Um, there will be no tests per se on the Gerasimov doctrine, but it helps to have an orientation that gives you some kind of reason to understand why all this nut job stuff is appearing on the internet. There is more than one reason, but this is a big reason because this is literally aimed at making you hate people who live in another part of the country. And um, I say, uh, let's not hate each other. There, I've said it. That's my big radical statement. Let's not hate each other. I will not hate you the next time I see you in class. <laughs>